This is a DIY HID motorcycle headlamp replacement kit which a viewer very kindly donated to me for review and I've ruined it before shooting the first second of video. Coming straight from our neighbours to the east China, this uh, Shilan motorcycle xenon lamp booster system from apparently 2013 should be able to make your car headlight brighter. As you may be able to tell, this isn't uh, something you'd find in a western store and the reason I ruined it is uh, the fact that you don't get any English instructions included whatsoever. You get some kind of basic connection diagram which uh, I suppose you can make sense of although you don't get all the units included. For what it's worth, Shilan at least seems to be quite proud of her brand considering you get a high-res picture of the headquarters and some kind of company history summary in Chinese, I'm assuming, since it's got various random dates written in it. The product number is the SKU194469 6000K PCK and uh, the SKU number can be typed straight into Banggood if you want to find this particular unit. You can also get it in 8000K color temperature, but I figured 6000K is bright enough. I personally actually love these kinds of headlamps for reasons you'll find out soon. Beyond that, the box is very bland and quite uh, devoid of uh, useful information. You get some kind of URL to what I'm assuming is their web page, but I haven't bothered checking it also get some illustrations about different kinds of headlamps. I'm assuming this is the H6 version, it's what it looks like. And something about 2007. Inside of a box you get the ballast, which seems to be of reasonable quality, uh, although it very certainly is not going to be very waterproof. These connectors are just uh, normal PCB mount connectors which are sticking out of a case. But uh, I'll, we'll try to tear this apart and have a look inside. It doesn't seem to be very hard to get inside of at all. You also get some kind of specifications, mostly in Chinese, but it uh, gives you a voltage range of 8 to 16 volts and a power output of 35 watts. Uh, something is DC 85 volts and something else is 25 to 32 watts. It should be noted that uh, they have uh, put a very insulated and hard to access connector for the uh, bulb which needs a very high voltage pulse in order to ignite and they also have a molded warning that says uh, max 23 kilovolts on it so props to them for not just using a <laughs> PCB mount connector for such high voltages beyond that we get a bag of mounting hardware I'm not certain what these would be used for but I'm assuming they are used to adapt the bulb for different mounts for different kinds of bikes or lamp mounts. This looks like a H4 mount, which uh, is not a very good thing in my opinion, since these Xenon light bulbs do not uh, <laughs> are not capable of dimming to half uh, low beams like H4 bulbs should. Uh, the balance does come with two output power levels, but these bulbs, as you can see, will shine light out in all directions at all times, whereas a H4 bulb has a reflector which limits the light output to a certain direction, making the light reflect down onto the road rather than up in everyone's faces. Uh, as a matter of fact, using one of these bulbs uh, here in Finland as a H4 replacement is highly illegal and uh, you will get <laughs> pulled over and ticketed if you install one. And beyond that all you get in the box is a power input cable of uh, fairly good quality actually. It's a uh, very high gauge, I'm assuming around a it's 20, 20 gauge wire which is uh, more than adequate for the uh, currents involved and it's got very very thick insulation which uh, I'm quite surprised to see. It's very nice contrast to the normal Chinese cheapo cables. The tin plating also seems to be of very high shiny quality. But alas, there is a strict lack of instructions. You only get this uh, QC past sticker 
Oh no, it's not even a sticker. In Chinese, which says past a three and two zip ties. So in lack of those instructions, I foolishly powered up the light bulb prior to shooting this review just in order to see if it worked. And uh, I only ran it for about you know, 30 seconds or so, but that was apparently enough to melt this plastic protective cap, which very clearly isn't supposed to be there. And it's fused the light into the plastic cap, so I'm not certain if I can get this light uh, apart enough to actually do a proper review of it. Uh, I'm hoping I will be, but if I can't, well, we'll just have to do with a teardown. I can confirm that uh, it does ignite and it used about 2.5 amps and the low beam setting. With it out of the way, we actually have a chance at uh, testing this thing. I've uh, mounted the H4 mounting hardware, which uh, should have made it obvious that you couldn't use it with the plastic cap on, since you couldn't get this on while it was there. The mounting hardware in itself is not very confident since telling it's uh, spring-loaded under there and hooks in with three very tiny little metal clips there, and if you just give it enough of a shake it'll basically just come apart on you so yeah probably not the most suitable thing to be used on a motorbike another thing I noted is that the high voltage cable is only 600 volt rated which uh, I'm not certain about the requirements for the igniting circuits on these things but we're going to have to try to just put a grounded needle against it and see if we can actually make it spark through the cable. If 23 cold volts is a true figure, well that might not be entirely inconceivable. At least the connector they've used is one of these little waterproof car things which seems to be of fairly high quality. Looking inside the ballast uh, we can see that uh, a bit to my surprise, everything is uh, potted in hard black epoxy, which uh, is a good thing, but they haven't done a very good job, because these connectors are not potted, and this is <laughs> exactly where you would want to have them potted, since this is where water is going to come in. The entire high voltage part, though, seems to be potted from start to finish, and I'm assuming this is some integrated transformer thing. It's hard to make anything out really. We have some generic name capacitors here. This one almost looks like a Samsung, but I can't make a statement. This epoxy is not coming off. It's actually very hard. And that's basically it. We have a few power resistors. This one is shrink wrapped. There's a big diode, small cap over there. Curiously, we have a large heat sink which is also semi potted. I'm not entirely sure what they were going for there. It would make a whole lot more sense to have a heat sink somewhere along the side of the unit. Beyond that, I don't think we're going to get anywhere further inside of this thing. Uh, taking this apart would be very destructive. Alright, so let's try and fire it up. Uh, we've got the light uh, to the left. Uh, obscured by a hard, di hard drive disk just in order to not saturate the camera entirely. We've got the ballast and it's connected to the uh, low beam which is the lower setting. We have our voltage meter, our current meter and a plug supplying 13.6 volts. It's uh, a battery that's also buffered by my lab power supply so it should be fairly stable and capable of fairly high peaks. I've got the current meter set to measure crest current, i.e. very quick peak current, because when I did uh, the uh, plastic melting uh, preliminary test on this thing, uh, I noticed that it used very high currents when starting up, so I'm hoping we'll be able to capture that. So, let's try and hook it up.
it followed up and it peaked at 12.73 amps. Now, for reference, we are at uh, roughly 6000K lighting in this room, and uh, to my eye, this light is slightly bluer than that, although it, ha of course, hasn't warmed up yet. Of a period consumption after the light has warmed up for a few minutes uh, on the low setting is uh, about 32 watts or 33 even, which uh, makes me kind of curious as to what the high setting is going to give us since uh, it's supposed to be a 35 watt light. And the answer to that is not a whole lot more since we're getting an input power of uh, about 37 watts. And for what it's worth, as a view of the arc as well as my cheap video camera and welding visor can manage. As for the actual light output quality of this light, I've taken a few pictures to demonstrate. What you're looking at now is the output of a normal 55 watt H4 car headlight. It's got a colour temperature of about 3100K and it's uh, colour corrected for that. This is how the uh, Chinese HID light looks uh, on the same uh, exposure and white balance settings. And here's how it looks if we over overlay the HID image uh, on top of the light bulb image. Now, if we actually colour correct the HID, uh, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's uh, a fair bit brighter, but uh, if we go even further and also exposure correct it, you will notice that uh, it has uh, a fair bit of lack in the red colours. If you look at the multimeter and the spray bottle to the right, uh, you can see that the, the reds and yellows are considerably darker using the HID headlight, which of course is to be expected. Beyond that, I actually am somewhat surprised at uh, how good this uh, light actually looks. Uh, I was expecting it to basically have zero reds in it uh, and some horrible pit in its spectrum, but uh, it actually performs reasonably good, and uh, same for the very high color temperature, which is going to ruin your night vision, uh, this light uh, should be fairly usable. Now, as for the build quality of the actual bulb itself, uh, it seems to be rather lacking, to say the least. The outer glass casing is not sealed, and uh, I've noticed that moisture gets inside of this when it's turned off, which uh, va vaporizes uh, during the first few minutes of operation, and I can't imagine this doing a whole lot of good for the longevity of the bulb. You also have this uh, horrible exposed wire, which could potentially carry very high voltages, and uh, if you install the bulb incorrectly or it falls loose, you could have a rather serious arcing situation going on. So, let's give this thing a bit of a safety test. In the setup, as you can see, I've put a very thin pointed wire right next to the high voltage bulb wire. The green wire is connected straight to ground. So, if this wire is suitable for the application, we will see no sparks whatsoever from it, and the light will turn on normally. However, I doubt that. So, let's go. Colour me surprise. Perhaps the output actually is isolated from the input, which it should be. Alright, take two. This time we have the wire poked into the negative side of a lamp. Quite impressively, it isn't arcing over. So, how about fixed post filament wire? The green cable is grounded to primary ground. Well, for all it's concerned, this thing actually seems to be reasonably safe. And as far as inducing noise on your electrical system, this thing isn't too bad at all. 
with uh, about 200 milliamps of ripple current uh, measured across a 1 ohm series resistor. And does it actually turn on for stated 80 volts? Yes, it does. The output power is even somewhat correct at roughly 32 watts on the higher setting. And the actual low voltage cutoff is. 7 volts. But curiously, it keeps drawing a fair amount of current after it's shut down. At the point where it turns back on. doesn't seem to exist, it just draws a bit more current. The lowest point where it will actually turn on seems to be somewhere around 7 volts, 7.5. And, and as a final test, does it have reverse polarity protection? Of some sort. And what hides inside the light itself? Just a solenoid. Ah, well, the explanation for why we didn't get an arc over is that the cable is actually a proper high voltage cable, which just has some 600 volt shrink wrap over it. Hmm, that's a very nice feature actually. I quite like that. Thumbs up. This bulb actually seems to be of fairly high quality. Same for the actual filament which well tube assembly which just doesn't seem to be very rigid at all. But the rest of it actually looks quite good. Nice moulding in the bottom. Overall nice. Is it safe for use in marine environments? Apparently, will it turn on reliably in marine environments? No. Will it turn on reliably while it's full of water? Yes. So, having determined that the ballast both has uh, reverse polarity pr protection and is suitable for marine use, all that remains is to ensure that the bulb is as well. Well, <laughs> After five minutes of consecutive submersion, I suppose the bulb is safe for marine use as well. So, while we've decided that both the ballast and the light bulb are suitable for marine use, lots of uh, marine vehicles use 24 volt battery systems. So, 24 volt compatibility is an important aspect of judging whether or not a system is suitable for marine use. it needs to be able to fire reliably on 24 volts, which it is unable to do. So, this light might not be suitable for 24 volt marine systems, but in case you installed it into one of those, I suppose it doesn't matter since it does have some form of over voltage protection. Now I'm just going to turn up the voltage until it fails, because boats sometimes do that. Oh no, I think it's short circuited. Perhaps more current will alleviate the issue. Ok, I am going to admit that I am impressed that this device has not failed entirely by now. Yes, that is a wall outlet, it's connected to my variac and this thing is dying now.
my varia caught fire. My flipping varia caught fire. I better unplug that. Okay, that's it. I give up. This thing is unkillable. But surely it won't still work. Oh, you're. <laughs> The high beam solenoid in the light is shorted and stuck on even in the low range setting, but the light still works. Well, the inside there isn't really anything wrong except an exploded primary cap. No carnage. And with that, I'm honestly out of ways to explode this thing with. I can't hook it up straight to mains because that's just going to flip the breaker at a moment's notice and not do anything because of the low impedance of this thing. So it's earned its freedom the only way I could destroy it is mechanically and I don't have the heart to do that after what it's been through. Well played Chinese ballast, well played. So, in conclusion, is there anything good to say about this device? Well, it seems to have quite impressive build quality for the price you pay. Uh, for $14 I would barely have expected a device that worked, yet one, <laughs> let alone one that uh, would survive that kind of abuse. It does give you considerably more light than a 55 watt H4 bulb and it does use less power than a 55 watt H4 bulb. It's a direct drop in replacement for both H4s, H6Ms and BA20D bulbs according to the package. I know nothing about automotive bulbs so I'm just going to take their word for it. And with the revelation of this nice insulating wire I, it does seem to be reasonably safe. Uh, now I can't speak for the cause of the transformer in this thing, if there's a risk of archive or such, but uh, I mean for a $14 device uh, it's as safe as you can expect it to be. However, I personally think that these are absolutely stupid since uh, they're basically inferior to an LED light in every way, so the only useful application for one is uh, as a direct drop-in replacement for a headlight. And uh, they don't really do a very good job at that, uh, being gas discharge bulbs at uh, 6000K and up. They are not going to do you a whole lot of good since your eye isn't very sensitive to high color temperatures at night. But that's a matter of taste, I suppose. And of course, they are usually illegal to use as a H4 replacement since they do not have the internal reflector of a H that a H4 bulb should have. So if you put this instead of a H4, you're going to daze everyone and uh, you might get pulled over by the cops depending on where you live. On the downside, the bulb seems quite rickety. It did survive <laughs> the water test, which surprised me. But I wouldn't expect it to live for very long at all, I'm afraid. It just does not seem to be a very high quality bulb. Although the internal construction is good. And one of the major issues with this particular device is that the uh, molded in electrolytic capacitors in the ballast are not of very high quality and it does run somewhat warm. So, while they primary capacitor which exploded certainly doesn't seem to be mission critical, the secondary ones are going to be. So, sadly, this thing is unlikely to survive for very long at all. Of course, depending on conditions, if you're only used in a very cool environment, perhaps you have a chance, but it's going to fail sooner or later. But beyond that, if you can't replace your headlight with an LED light, and you for whatever reason, don't find the light of an incandescent bulb to be suitable for your needs, and you have $14 and no more to spend, I suppose this product might be the product for you. However, I personally do not like it. But the review and test results should speak for themselves, and uh, you should be able to make your own decision based upon that. So. 
Thank you for watching and cheerio.